Hey guys, my name is Nicole. Welcome back to my channel for another DIY upcycling video. Today I have a variety of projects to share with you, most of which I'll be selling in my antique booth, Green Onion Vintage, hopefully for a good profit. Thank you so much to Cricut for sponsoring today's video and let's jump right into project number one. So I'm starting off today with these pair of wooden shutters my mom grabbed these for me at a yard sale and she paid $6 each. Now I wanted to darken the wood of these because I have a display idea for my antique booth. I think these would be really pretty kind of up on a hutch. So I want to make them like a really nice dark wood with a fall floral arrangement on each one. And so I'm using a water-based stain and using a spray bottle of water as I stain them to kind of give them a more like patchy, worn look to the wood. I'm using a medium gel stain, not gel stain, a medium water-based stain from General Finishes and just kind of did a really patchy stain job on them so that they looked old and rustic. And here's a comparison of the before and after. And then after I stained both of them, I let them dry. I chose um, like a neutral gingham ribbon and these fall wreaths from Hobby Lobby, they are around every October. I've seen them for fall for a few years now, so I really like those. I just nailed that ribbon right on the back with my staple gun, trimmed the ribbon up, and how quick was that project? Took those from, you know, pretty much nothing to now they're a really cute decor piece. I'm so excited to be partnering with Cricut for today's video. Cricut is a brand of smart cutting machines, tools, and materials, and they just released their Series 3 machines, which are more powerful and have faster cutting ability. The Maker 3 is new to me. I used to use my Explore Air 2 for years and years. The Maker can cut over 300 materials, including fabric, vinyl, cardstock, leather, and wood. And it has 13 tools to cut with. I have been enjoying my Maker 3 so much. It's a much more powerful machine than the Explore Air 2 that I'm used to. And with the Maker 3 and the Explore Air 3 machines, now you can use their smart vinyls and cut without the use of a cutting mat and you can cut up to 12 feet long. So that's a huge difference for me and it's made my work much quicker and more efficient. I'm especially excited to be working with Cricut because Cricut is one of the reasons why I started my booth in the first place. I was a stay at home mom that desperately needed a creative outlet and I got a Cricut for Christmas almost four years ago and immediately started making these barn wood signs and I was dying for somewhere that I could sell them. And that was kind of the birth of Green Onion Vintage. This is my first tent that you're looking at here. And I made all of those signs with my Cricut Explore Air 2. So I'm so excited to be upgrading to the Maker 3. For my second project, I am going to be showing you my absolutely most popular sign that I sell in my antique booth. Um, these are called a reverse canvas method sign. So I get these canvases from Michaels. They're really affordable. I think I get like a pack of seven. Um, and depending on the sale price, I got these, this pack for $12. Sometimes they're closer to 20, just depending on what sales going on, but very, very affordable. And for the reverse canvases, you're going to kind of just rip off the canvas from the frame that it comes with. I like to use this little, um, Cricut X-Acto knife to kind of slice the canvas off the ends and you're going to end up with a very plain wooden frame and then i just trim the canvas because i am going to nail this canvas right back onto the back of the frame that i just exposed but i'm going to use the natural canvas side so once i have everything trimmed up you'll see i have a pile of scraps my nice flat canvases and then a pile of frames so to finish up the frames, I just stain them. I use that same water-based stain from General Finishes and the medium brown. And I just use a foam brush uh, to stain them and then wipe off all the excess. It takes quite a bit of time. This is probably the most time-consuming part is just making sure that everything is stained and all the surfaces and corners and edges. But eventually you'll get to where you have your whole pack stained. And I just really like this brown. It's nice and neutral, doesn't have any red. And then I go over to my Cricut Design Space and these are my party of signs. I have seen them in other places now, but I felt like when I started making them a couple years ago, I hadn't seen them before. Um, so I just make a party of with several numbers. Now I'm so excited to be using the Maker 3 today for this project because now with the smart materials, I can cut up to 12 feet of vinyl at once. Uh, with my previous Explore Air 2 machine, I could only cut up to 24 inches. 
So this is going to save me so much time because I only have to go through the cutting process once and I'll get very many signs out of one cut. It's going to make me so much more efficient because I'm not very good at making things in bulk. I don't do a lot of like uh, repetitive items like this, um, but I do have a lot of requests for this sign. So I end up making a lot of them and just having the smart materials where you can use the roll and you don't have to use a cutting mat. That is making things so much easier for me. I couldn't even believe it. The Maker 3 is also a little different in that it cuts twice as fast as the previous series of machines. But I feel like I'm barely kind of tapping into the potential of the machine. So there's definitely going to be more videos coming up of me figuring out what I should make with this Maker 3 because I know the possibilities are endless. And once my design is cut out, I will go ahead and weed out all of the excess vinyl so that I'm left with just my design and it's ready to be ironed on to my canvas. Right now I'm using the Easy Press 2 iron to iron on this vinyl. Uh, it's such an easy process. I love this iron. I feel like there's mixed reviews out there about using the iron versus a heat press, but I find that the Easy Press is so much better than just using like a household iron because it has nice even heat and it can go up to, I believe, 450 degrees. I'll have to double check that um, and I'll put a little note here, but it gets really, really nice and hot and it has even coverage. So I love having the Easy Press too. It's definitely made all of my iron on projects much easier. And here is a final look at the party of signs that are such a big seller for me. Similarly to that project, I'm using the iron on vinyl now to customize some canvas totes. And you can buy these really affordably from Michaels. There's also some available on the Cricut website. Um, so I just used the Minecraft font that I downloaded from defont.com and typed my boys' names. So now they each have a little tote bag that they can take either to the library or um, out to even like our farmer's market. And actually when I made them, they said they're gonna use them for trick-or-treating, so that works out too. Uh, so you can see the iron-on is so easy to work with. Once you have it cut, you're just gonna lay it where you want it to lay. It doesn't stick automatically. It's not sticky until you've applied the heat. And then you just iron it on. Make sure you have a lot of pressure on there so the vinyl's not gonna come back up. And here you go. Look how cute it is. I love using the iron on. It's definitely my preferred vinyl. And I mean, the customization abilities for those projects are endless. Next up, I'm doing a few signs that are specific to fall. So I had already painted this pumpkin last year and I put this sign in my booth. It didn't sell. I'm sure it's just a little too plain for most people. So right now I am top coating it with a clear coat because I wanna put some words on this using the permanent Cricut vinyl in black. It's like a nice black matte vinyl. Um, so I'm prepping this board so that the vinyl will stick on there nice and easily. Going over to my design space and making this autumn harvest design. It says gourds and pumpkins underneath. So I like to use kind of a mixture of fonts when I'm making my designs. And I'm going over now to cut it. Again, I don't have to use a mat because I'm using the smart material vinyl. And this feeder that you're seeing here that the roll sits in, that is an additional accessory that's going to hold your roll of vinyl. And then the machine's going to kind of move the vinyl back and forth as it needs to, which is really amazing and handy. It's definitely very high tech um, and really fun to watch. And then the roll holder also has a little knife at the end or a little blade that you can slide across um, and cut your project out. So once I have that cut, I have to go through the weeding process, uh, which just means I'm removing all of the excess vinyl using this little straight edge cutter from Cricut. And then uh, just a little weeding tool from Cricut also. And I'm just pulling up all the excess vinyl here that I don't want to be on my sign. Um, being really careful that I pull it straight up so that the stickiness of the vinyl doesn't pull up my design that I want to stay on the paper. Um, and then once I have all those little pieces out, I'm going to use the Cricut transfer tape, kind of measuring it here, just eyeballing it. It doesn't have to be perfect at this point. Pulling back just a little bit of the transfer tape, and then I like to lay it on my design with just like about like a couple inches off. And then I pull the rest of the backing of the transfer tape off and just smush it down nice and firmly. I have to really go back and forth at this phase a lot to get that transfer tape to pick up the image. Um, so this can be kind of a time consuming 
part, but don't get frustrated. Just, I have this little scraper that comes in the Cricut toolkit and I'm just using that to press really, really firmly so that that tape is going to pick up my entire design. So here you can see I'm kind of peeling it up. Um, if there's a letter giving you a hard time, I just kind of use my finger to apply more pressure in that area. And with a little bit of work, I got it to peel up uh, pretty easily. It just took me a couple minutes to do this process. Typically, the smaller letter letters I have a harder time with. So once I have that all done, you can see now my image is on this sticky transfer paper. And now I'm ready to lay the design right on to my sign. So I mostly eyeball this at this point. I've gotten pretty good at eyeballing what's straight, um, but I will use a ruler normally just to double check before I firmly lay everything down. And now I'm just gonna push the design back onto this sign, pushing really firmly again. I'm gonna use that same scraper tool. And that is to allow my vinyl to release from the transfer paper now and I'll be left with a really cute little design at the end. There are very many shades of the vinyl available on the Cricut website and also in Michaels. I think Target also is carrying Cricut products as well. So the Smart Materials have come out earlier in the spring and I'm sure they're releasing more, but there are already like a wide variety of Smart products that you can get um, Smart Materials from Cricut. So they don't require that cutting mat. So really it's a much easier process than it used to be. Now I'm going to be framing this. I've done this a lot, but not too often on my channel. So I'm just using some 1x2 furring strips from Home Depot. They're very cheap, but they're also very long, so I always have to cut them down. This is literally just some framing that I got out of my scrap pile in my garage. Um, so all I do is just measure the sides of my sign first, cut them down to size, and then I'll do the same for the top. But I like to do the sides first so that I can remeasure the top boards. Um, once I already have my sides done, if that makes sense. So I do the sides first and the top and bottom. I'm using the exact same medium brown water-based stain from General Finishes. This is my favorite brown that I've found so far. And I love that it's water-based so the cleanup is so easy. And then once I've let those dry for a minute, I just attach them to my sign using my Ryobi Brad Nailer. You guys always ask about it and it is just the Ryobi brand. I've gotten a Home Depot for about $99. Um, and it's probably one of my favorite power tools that I own. I use it all the time and it's perfect for something like this. So then I frame it and I will put like a little uh, sawtooth hanger on the back and this one will be ready to go. For my next project, I'm designing a garland, just a paper garland to kind of drape across my booth. And I am doing this by first finding a pumpkin that I like in the design space. So I picked this one. And I'm just overlaying two small circles, and that's going to be where my string goes through to create the garland. Um, once I have my circles in the spot that I want, I just select the circle and the pumpkin and slice the circle out. And that's going to tell the machine to cut this circle. And then, oh gosh, oh gosh, not the pumpkin, the circle. So I'm taking these circles out here, or at least I'm trying to. My internet's a little slow down here. Uh. So I'm slicing out, sliced out that circle. I'm selecting this because I have another circle behind the pumpkin. Slicing that one out. And then if I move this aside, I have these two circles that will now be cut out by the machine. And I have this so that it's 3.7 inches wide and 3.5 inches tall. I'm going to be using a 12 by 12 inch piece of cardstock and so if I do these dimensions I have enough space in my cardstock to do three rows of three. I got this really pretty kind of heavyweight cardstock from Michaels. It's almost like a very very thin pressed board and it has a nice little chevron pattern to it. So I'm going to cut nine of my pumpkins out on this cardstock and then I have some black and white buffalo check that I'm going to be doing nine other pumpkins on and I'm going to alternate the wood or this cardboard color in the gingham color on my garland and I think it'll be really pretty in the end. So I'm just going to cut this out, string it up, and this one will be all done.
for my sixth project, I am going to show you guys how I make my gingham signs. Um, I've painted gingham several times on my channel before. So if you need a fuller tutorial, maybe I'll try to look back and see which video is the best. But I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. I like to start my stripes in the center and I always use painter's tape to make my gingham. Um, I have a nice white background right now. I always recommend starting with your lightest color. So I already have this piece of scrap board painted white. I'm gonna be turning this into another fall sign. And then my second color is gonna be drop cloth. So I'm just gonna be painting my vertical stripes, this drop cloth, which is my next shade darker of white. I do sell Dixie Belle paints on my Green Onion Vintage Etsy site. So if you are not sure where to find some really high quality chalk paints, I love the Dixie Belle chalk paints. They are so nice and thick and easy to use. And I just needed one coat of that drop cloth and it had amazing coverage. Um, now that I have those vertical stripes painted and they are all dry, mind you, I did have some time lapse in between here. I'm gonna be taping off my stripes in the opposite direction. And so now I'm starting with a center stripe going horizontally and just using the painter's tape as a guide as far as my spacing. And now I'm gonna be painting these stripes uh, yet another shade darker. So once I have that all taped up, I'm ready to paint again, just another stripe. I'm using the color sandbar, which is just slightly darker than the drop cloth color. I'm going for a really subtle gingham right now, as you can tell. Now I'm going to paint my darkest square. So wherever those two stripes overlap, I'm re-taping those. And then the overlap of those stripes, I am painting yet another shade darker. So this is the color putty from Dixie Belle. And that is going to give you the really perfect gingham effect is if you, when you paint those squares one shade darker, then it looks really nice and professional. So you guys will see here the reveal. I love the combination of these colors. It's just really subtle and neutral. And look at that. Nice and easy. It doesn't take too long for me to do this anymore. Now I'm going back over to my Cricut Design Space and designing my own uh, Pick Your Own Pumpkin sign. I'm making this a layered sign and I'm making this a stencil out of cardstock. So um, I found that cardstock is a really affordable way to make a stencil. And like I said, I'm making this layered. So I'm cutting the pumpkin as my first layer and then I will paint the pumpkin, let that dry, and then I will use the word stencils over the pumpkin to create that nice layered look. And it came out really cute in the end. So right now you can see I'm back to using the cutting mat because I am using just regular old scrap cardstock to make my stencil. So I'm using a mixture of this pumpkin Waverly paint from Walmart and then the Rebel Yellow paint from Dixie Belle as well as some putty. And you can see I'm just using a paper plate as my palette here to kind of mix the shade of orange that I want. And I'm using a makeup brush to stipple on there. I always use a makeup brush when I'm stenciling because I can get a really light coverage of paint, which prevents it from seeping under my stencil and causing um, just some bleeding. You don't want that at all. I like a nice crisp edge when I'm stenciling and I found that the makeup brush is just the absolute best way. I loved how the orange kind of went on transparently so you could still see the gingham through there. I wasn't intentional, but I really liked how that turned out. And then I just used the brush to paint in some darker lines on the pumpkin. And once I've added some detail here, I will just go ahead and immediately lift up my stencil. I like to do that when my paint's still a little bit wet. And I mean, I was so proud of how that pumpkin turned out. I thought it looked great. And then I had the words also cut out of cardstock. I just laid those right on the design where I wanted them to be placed. Using painter's tape to protect the sign in case I go a little overboard with my uh, makeup sponge. I don't want to go over the edge of the cardstock and get some of my sign. So I just use a paper, the painter's tape um, just as an extra protection just in case. I'm using the Caviar Black Paint from Dixie Belle. I would recommend chalk paint for, when stenciling because it's nice and thick. The thicker your paint is, the less likely it is to bleed under your stencil. And again, I'm using a makeup sponge and just stippling the paint on there. I do two really thin coats. So the thinner your coats are, the more likely you are to have a nice crisp edge. If you go in there with too much paint, you're just going to let your paint bleed under your sign and you do not want that. And I just removed this as it was still a little bit wet when I pulled the stencil up and you can see that it came out nice and clean. And then I just take a teeny tiny little artist brush 
and fill in some of the stencil lines that I had made on my Cricut machine so that uh, the stencil would all stay together and like the centers of the O's wouldn't drop out or anything. And then to frame this, I'm just doing a frame on the top and bottom and kind of making this like a hanging sign style. I'm staining them with the same stain. And this is just some scrap wood that I had hanging out in my garage. And I don't nail this on because they're so thin. I just glue them with the, the Gorilla Glue, which I use all the time, and it's nice and sturdy. And I just use something heavy to set on top of those frame boards, let them dry overnight. Oh, and I also clamp them down. And here's how it turned out. I did attach a little hanging rope on the top and you will see that in the final reveal. Now for my seventh project, I'm using this new offset feature in the Cricut Design Space. And you can see it there. It's kind of that outside outline of the fall. So I just typed in the fall font and it looks like an outline because I'm actually using the writing feature of the Cricut Maker 3. Um, the Maker 3 can cut, it can embose, it can also write, and you can use the markers that Cricut sells. Um, they have a wide variety of colored markers, and today I'm just using a black marker. And I'm going to be making the words out of felt, so I'm using this black marker to just draw my designs right onto the felt so that I can cut them out. If I had the rotary tool, I think I would have been able to use that to just cut out these letters. Um, but that is still on my wish list. So for today, I used the Cricut scissors, which are super, super small and sharp, and cut that felt out. I painted this pumpkin the muscadine wine color from Dixie Belle. These are paper mache pumpkins that you can get right now at Hobby Lobby. And then I glued my design right onto the pumpkin. I thought this had like a really cute, like vintagey, old school, like college throwback design and I really like how that one turned out. All right guys, as much as I would love to just keep creating things, maybe forever apparently, I have a lot more ideas than what I showed you today. I'm gonna cut myself off here and show you our final looks. I really like how everything came out. I had a really good time kind of playing with the Maker 3 and I, and I know that I haven't even like scratched the surface of everything that it can do, but it felt really good to kind of get back into the swing of things with my Cricut and learn some new techniques. I think for today my favorite sign is going to be this Autumn Harvest sign. I love how the permanent black vinyl just looks so crisp and clean. This font especially is super cute. I love it for fall. Um, so what I'll try to do down in the description box is um, give you a little bit of a detail for each project so that you know exactly what fonts I used. I think all the fonts I used today are the Cricut fonts that you can also download in the design space on Cricut. So I'll try to be nice and detailed for you so that you guys can replicate these if you'd like to. Um, so that was with the permanent vinyl there. And then this sign was one that I made the stencil out of cardstock and then painted. How cute is that? I love the gingham background, just the combination of the orange with the gray gingham and the black font. I think that one came out really well also. And it does have a little hanging rope here. I didn't show me making this sign. I actually just kind of threw it together. Um, in the wee hours of the night But I thought it'd be fun to have this chalkboard down here for when I am filming and this could be in the background um, So this is just a, a vintage slate Chalkboard in the green so I rubbed it down with chalk and just kind of spread it around and then I just cut out My green onion vintage just with some white cardstock and I actually just taped it on here because I'm not sure that I wanted to make it permanent yet. You could probably also use the vinyl, but then it would probably pull up your chalk. So it just kind of depends the look you're going for. The cardstock was really, really easy to work with. And since I was just throwing it together and I wasn't sure I wanted this, this to be permanent, um, this worked out really well. So how cute is that? And that'll be perfect for the background of my videos. And then I have my party of signs with the iron-on vinyl. And I kind of showed you that whole process, but 
I didn't show me making this sign. But I used the exact same process for this sign. So let that show you that really there is no limit to what you can create once you've mastered the reverse canvas skill. So once you figure out like a, a color scheme that you like, I kind of just repeat the same thing over and over again, but I just make new designs for my signs. So uh, you really can create anything. It's gonna look really nice if you just use the reverse canvas like I did today with the iron on vinyl. And I mean, there's so many other things you can make with this same technique. There's other colors of vinyl that you can use. Really, there is no limit to the creations possible, but today I kind of kept it basic for you. I used the black vinyl and then just the wood frame, but I have lots more ideas, so uh, make sure you subscribe if you haven't yet so you can see some more ideas in the future. I think that one's so pretty, and I love that quote from Laura Ingalls. Here's how the shutters look. I like having a big statement piece like this. What I kind of set up for you today is how I would display these items in my actual antique booth, which these are going to go in my booth, pretty much everything you see here. So once I have everything kind of set up in my booth and everything arranged, I will film another video there giving you an antique store tour. And I do a couple of those a month. Here's how my little banner came out. That was so cute, so simple, and just another one of those things where, I mean, there is no limit to how many types of banners like this you could create. Michaels has such a good assortment of cardstock, so, I mean, just go there, have fun, pick out some cardstock. You can create anything. It'd be perfect for birthday parties. What I actually want to do is go to Michaels and get some wooden beads and do, like, a wood bead in between each pumpkin. I think that would be really cute and would make it look a little bit more expensive because I don't think I could, I don't know that I would sell it as it is since it is just cardstock, but I think adding the wood beads would be a really nice touch. And then, oh, I have my boy's bags. My older boy took his, I don't even know where it is right now, um, but this is Lincoln's. They love those and they both had the idea to use them for trick-or-treating. I would like to make myself one that says like homeschool mom or something along those lines. Um, and again, that was with the iron on vinyl, another super simple project. And then you guys just saw me finish up this pumpkin and I'm not at all saying that this is like a finesse project, but I think I'm onto something. I haven't seen anybody else do the felt like this on a pumpkin, especially. I like how vintagey it looks. Um, kind of reminds me like of, of a, my old letterman jacket back in high school. So I think there's potential here in this idea. I'm not saying that I've conquered it yet, but I did want to go ahead and share this project with you. Even though I'm not sure I'll sell it as is, I do think there's some room here for some really cool creations. So I'm going to maybe keep this idea in my mind. I liked using the Cricut to kind of make, to write on the felt. That was such an easier way to do it rather than printing off the letters and stenciling it, et cetera, et cetera. So this was just... It was an attempt, and I think it's really cute, and I might actually try to sell it as is, but I, I kind of might just display it in my own home and keep thinking on ways that I can improve that design. But overall, I thought that was really fun, and just another cool use for the Cricut. I definitely want to get the rotary blade so that I can be cutting more fabrics. I just feel like the possibilities are endless with my new Cricut Maker. I hope you enjoyed today's projects. Let me know down in the comments below which one was your favorite. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.